Welcome, welcome to the all day virtual craft festival. It's been a long, long day, a lot of great crafters. I hope you guys all had a really good time and we've got one more person after me, that'd be Carl Jacobson. Always does a great demo, so we don't want to miss that one. So today I am going to make a beehive box. Something along this lines. This one's kind of a a dud. There's a practice piece though, so I'm not too worried about it. So we got some bright lights in here today. Let's see if that helps. There we go. So we've got and we've got the inside of course. A little bit of texturing on the inside, some texturing on the bottom. We're gonna go through all that. Let's get on it. I'm gonna grab me a roughing gouge here. And let's that's a good view right there. I'm just going to rough this piece down real quick. I tend to turn a little fast. So we got it at about 1800 RPMs thereabouts. So I want to start on the inside and work my way out with the roughing gouge. We're just going to turn it around for get the basic shape going here. It feels like we're almost there, almost. This is a piece of sugar pine out of the Sierra Nevada mountains. There's Sequoia National Park. It's taken out of the National Forest, actually. It's all reclaimed lumber. These pieces, these pieces come from trees that have fallen down up there. And, oh, I've got an alarm going off. That means I started just a little early. Alexa, turn off the alarm. Thank you. But it'll give me more time to maybe make that magic wand after all. So, so let's have a look, see where we're at. And we're almost round. As we can see, we're going to get, get some of that rest of that off of there, clean that, get to the clean part of the wood. I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat while I do this. So I'll stop every now and again, take a look, see if there's any questions, which I will do right now. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, no questions yet, but this is all basic wood turning stuff pretty much. All right. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to true up the ends real quick with a parting tool, and then I'm going to do the general shaping. With the large parting tool, I want to make a a tenon at this end, but I'm going to true up the end first. So I'm going to grab me my calipers that I set earlier. I'm just going to see where we're at here, and. Once this falls over, I'll know it's the right size for my chuck jaws. There we go. That's what we needed there. And I'm going to switch cameras here, maybe get a whole different view. I got alarms going off everywhere, don't I? Eh. I didn't want to mess up and miss the start time. So just one more half a cut of the width of the parting tool here. Just make sure we have a good tenon going. Since I'm using a talon jaws or a talon chuck, I need a straight tenon and not a dovetail tenon. Now I'm just creating a nice sharp flat area right here with a sharp corner. And we are there. So now I want to do is just start general shaping of the piece. 
So this is going to be the... You know what? I'm going to turn it around, put it in those jaws while I'm at it, while I'm thinking about this. So I'm just going to true up this end real quick first. There we go. So I need to pop this out of the chuck. Now's a good time to ask any questions yet. Nope. No questions. And I'm going to switch my glasses real quick. So I do have my safety readers on, and I prefer to wear my actual safety glasses. There we go. I'm going to take my spur drive out of here. It's in my chuck. And that's perfect depth there. We don't want the tent in the bottom out in the bottom of the jaws or it's not going to seat nice and tight against the, the jaws right here. So we need really nice contact right here all the way around. And because this pine is a little soft, I need to give it a couple of good cranks here. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Now we can start shaping it. So I'm just going to use my large roughing gouge again and just get the general shape going and then we'll switch over to a smaller roughing gouge and then work our way to a spindle gouge. I'm going to slide my tailstock just a little further back. And to create this shape, I do need to drop my tool rest down just a little bit. There we go. We're not going to use this whole thing for the for the box. So I'm just going to grab a pencil. I'm going to mark it using my other pre-made one here. Just to give you an idea how deep we're actually going to go. And just leave a little room for play right there. Yeah, grab me my parting tool again. Just mark that where I, that way I don't go beyond this area here. Just a little ways. So also give me room to work with around this for the shaping. I don't want to go any further than that. Everybody knows kind of basically what a beehive kind of looks like. All right, so that's about as far as I can go with the big roughing gouge. I'm going to grab me my smaller one here. And it's going to keep on shaping down on this side too. Kind of give a give me an idea of what I'm looking for here before I start making any beads and marking up where I want the lid to be. All right, so now I need to readjust my tool rest, bring it around here so I can get rid of this part up on the top. I'm going to smooth it over. Mm, let's see if I can get a better picture of that here. So you guys can see what I'm doing there. There we go. Now I need to lower my tool rest just a little bit more here for this tool. I did leave kind of a groove in the top, so we want to get rid of that. And 
And now that I got that part done, I can finish up the shaping here so I got a pretty good idea of what the dome top looks like. Sort of looks like a light bulb at this point, but we want just nothing but roundness on this. I think I got a pretty good shape going here now. So I'm just going to do a clean up real quick. It's kind of nice, gentle cuts, and I'm going to sand it with 120 real quick just to get rid of any tool marks. And any dips and bumps that might have shown up during the using the roughing gouge here. So just 120 will really do a really quick job on this. On this pine here. This it's a fairly soft but very nice pine. It doesn't have a lot of resin in it, which is why I like it so much. It's got nice grain in it, too. Ah, what made you, me decide on this project? Summertime. Summertime is a, always a good time. You see the bees out. Springtime, summertime. All right, so we got a good shape going there. So I'm grabbing my parting tool one more time and just mark where I want this to bottom out. Just a slight mark, not too deep, because I still need to hollow this out. Give me an idea where I want those beads to end. All right. Now this is going to be the fun part. I don't generally, I don't, I don't even own one. I don't use the easy beaters or things like that. I like to do my, my beads by hand just with a simple parting tool. So I'm going to start it towards the bottom there and work my way towards the top. Almost forgot one step though. I need to figure out where I need to put that. I need to part it off for the box here. So it's three inches. So I'm going to do it like about two inches there. This is basically the tenon that's going to go inside the box. So I'm just going to make it kind of deep. There we go. And one more slight little cut there, and then I'll part it off with my thin parting tool when it comes time to do that portion of the, the piece. So I'm going to start at the bottom here, and I'm just going to start rolling beads by having my tool straight up and down. I need to adjust my tool rest just a little bit down here. And what I do is I just do a simple, I get the bead uh, bevel rubbing, bring the tool handle up until it starts cutting. Then I just do a simple twist and a push in, just like that. And I'm just going to continue that all the way down. I'm not trying to make each bead exactly the same. Because if you've seen beehives, eh? towards the middle, the, the bees get... A, a little bit bigger. And then they kind of shrink towards the top, again towards the, the, the top here. So I need to adjust my tool rest around. Uh, you know, I'm going to work on this part first. So I need to do the opposite direction. Same kind of cut, just different direction here. Get the, so like cuts here, start in the middle of that bead there.
And you can see those beats forming pretty good. And if you're not happy with them, sandpaper can clean that, make them a little bit rounder. I'm going to stop to see if there's any more questions. Do you have a preference on tool brands? Well, this one is a Henry Taylor spindle gouge. It's the M42 type of steel. I like Thompson. Um, I started out using Sorbies, and I've, I've still got some of those left, but they, I've kind of grind most of those away. And so I've been replacing them with uh, more better steel type, type of tools. All right, so we're going to start up here again. Oh, that's too low. All right. So this is a little different because we're making beads on a curve. So you got to take that into account here. So we'll have to adjust the tool rest every now and again. So I need to make a smaller beads here. I'll probably grab me a smaller spindle gouge as I work my way towards the top. And I have one right here. There it is. This is an old glazer. Yep. Very old. What is this? Yeah. An old glazer tool. Pretty cool. Huh? It's made in Portland, Oregon, 2007. I like these old type of tools. I need to raise my tool rest because this is a smaller tool here. There we go. Same type of thing. We need to... Uh, I'm way too high now. <laughs> Same thing. We're just going to raise the tool rest up and do that kind of a dip in there. And then we got to work our way around. Gonna make the beads a little smaller as we get towards the center. And we need to adjust it one more time down. That way we're cutting that bead right on the center here. So we just need to come back and adjust these. Just a nice little. All right, this has already lost its edge. So I'm going to grab me a different spindle gouge. Wow, I can't believe that one already lost its edge. But All right. So let's try this one here. Ah, it's too small. I'm just going to go back to my big spindle gouge here. That's working better. So I just need to work my way back around. Oops. Bring my tool rest back around that way. It's kind of opposite turns here. And what I want to do is try to adjust this bead to where it matches this one down here. So when the box is closed, they'll line up. So this one's a little bit big, so we're just gonna we're just gonna take this down a little bit here. So I'm just bending over and having a look. Gonna ease that corner off there a little bit. Bring that corner back around this way. There we go. All right. We pretty much got that matched up. So I'm just going to come in with that same sanding, piece of sanding paper, 120. Oh, which side of the bead is more difficult? It depends on if you're left-handed or right-handed. If you're right-handed, going towards the headstock, it's a little more difficult. If you're left-handed, the right turns are a little more difficult on you. It's a good question, though. Let me turn that up just a little bit. This just helps you round over the beads. Yeah. Want nice curves on these. So. Get rid of any 
tool marks that might have been left behind. When it comes to making beads, sandpaper is your friend, at least for me. <laughs> As you can see, if I was to use like the, one of those easy wood type of beads, all these beads would have been pretty much kind of like the same size. It would have been more machine made. And so I kind of tend to, look, to stay away from those a little bit. All right, so. Got some nice beads there, so I'm just going to come in with my point tool and I'm just going to create a little bit of a deeper area here just to kind of define these beads a little bit more. I left the line in there, so I need to come back with my sandpaper and touch that up. go this just helps deepen the the grooves all right so what I like to sometimes do, but I can't do it in here. I don't have a piece of formica. Sometimes I'll get a thin piece of wood or formica, and I'll, I will burn lines in between all these grooves. But I don't have any on hand right now. So we're just going to leave it at that. So what I want to do now is I'm going to grab me my small parting tool. Well, first I want to kind of, there's kind of a little bit of a groove on this tenon. And I also want to make sure it's good and parallel. I'm just going to glance down there. This, so we can go a little bit deeper now. Now that we have these two beads that look like they're going to line up on the boxes together. So I'm going to grab you my small, my very thin parting tool here. And I'm going to part the lid off. All right, so that's deep enough to where I can just twist that off now. There we go. So what I need to do now is I just need to measure this tenon so I make the opening right. So I'm going to grab me my calipers here. And I'm going to slide some of these tools out of the way. So what I want to do is just measure these here, measure that tenon, and there we go, that's good, we'll lock that down, put that over here for now, swing my tool rest around, and I'm just going to create a mark using my calipers, I'm just going to bring it up just gently right on and then I'm just going to make sure this point touches the wood. This point does not. Because you don't want these things flying back at you, that's for sure. So I'm going to turn down the speed a little bit here. We don't need to do this at a high rate of speed. So I like to start just start on the inside, work my way out until I get the right line going here. Just a little bit more out. All right, we are lined up. And we'll creep up on that when we're hollowing the inside. So for this, I'm going to put the post right under the center of my, of the center of the wood. That way when I'm drilling a hole with my 
spindle gouge, I got the most support out of my tool rest. So we just need to speed this up again. I need to get rid of oh, a little too fast there. Let me get rid of this little nub in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my tool in sort of like at 45 degrees. And I can just do some peeling cuts. Just Instead of going in, I'm coming out because going in, I'll be fighting in grain. And I'm just going to get you guys a better view of this. Is that a, there we go. That's a good view, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to bring this out just like this. And I'm just going to adjust that camera around just a little bit. Just to get a better, maybe a better angle. So I just push the tool in at what, 45 degrees, kind of like a drill bit. And then I bring the tool out. Okay, so it's kind of hopping and jumping, so it's time to get me a, a scraper here. Because once you go so far at the overhang, you, the tool can get a little jumpy. So I'm just going to grab me a easy wood tool with a round carbide bit on it. And I'm going to need to bring my tailstock a little further back because the handle's hitting. There we go. Straight in, straight on the hint center there. And I'm trying to remember to match the shape of the inside to the outside here. I find with the easy wood tools, I can actually go in and out both directions without any, not very much difficulty. Okay, so we're almost there. So I want to stop here. And I'm going to grab me my box scraper and just put a straight parallel cut right into the side here. Going in straight, tools. Uh, I got to move my tail center out of my. It's just kind of a cumbersome thing having it right there. All right. So I need to lift the handle just a little bit. Need to raise the tool rest a little bit because this is a scraper. So it needs to be a little bit above center. And here we go. And now I want to check the fit of the lid. And we are almost there just about now this part is going to be the fun part is i like to texture the inside and a little detail to the inside there so i'm right on the end line there so hopefully i didn't go too small it might be a little loose but that's all right if it is so you don't need to worry about using this as a jam chuck. Ooh. Wow, just, oh man. <laughs> wow, just, ah. It's one of those things where it's like, do I dare to go any further? But I have to because it's not quite going on. So just a very slight. So this, this. This box cutter is got an angle on this end too. 
with a burr along the edge, so I can bring it in at a 40, a slight tilt, not 45 degrees, but this will let me to just take some very light straight cuts. You got a pop fit there, see? So I don't like it when it's quite that tight. It's a, I don't like when you pull a, a box lid off and everything goes flying out because the, it's just a little too, too tight. The reason why I don't want to sand it is because that can actually mess up this cut. It can actually create a a thicker area on one part and a thinner area along here. And the, the, when you twist the lid, it could get actually when you turn it like this. If you do you sandpaper, you won't be able to turn it like that because it'll actually jam on, loosen, jam on, almost like it's threaded. We got a good fit there though, just like that. Okay, so we need to adjust that size of that bead right there. So I'm going to grab me my spindle gouge and adjust that right now. I'm going to pull the lid off. Where are you? There we go. Just, a, just needs a little bit of tweak in here. Too low. I need to bring it up. Is there any questions? Ah, looks like they're, everybody's having a good time chatting. That's great. So I'm just going to kind of make this bead a little smaller. And we can touch it with the sandpaper again just to clean it up. That's much better. All right, so we got pretty equal beads all the way around. This one's a little bit bigger than this one, but that's how nature is. It's never exact. So we're just going to clean up this face here. I also like to soften this just a little bit right here on the corner. So that way when... when a lot of the use of the pulling and putting the lid back on and off, if this is a little soft, it will, won't tend to crack the wood as much. If it's like a really hard surface, sharp corner right there, and you keep popping it on, popping it on, off on, it can cause a, a stress crack in there, as I found out. So what time are we? Ah, okay, we're doing good. <sighs> All right, so I'm just going to part this off. So I'm grab me my parting tool here. And then we're going to hollow the lid here in just a second. And when I'm doing this parting tool, I'm doing kind of a slight undercut, which will allow the box to sit flat on the table just around the edges here and I'm gonna touch that corner up with this because there's kind of a sharpness to that and I'm just gonna look over the beads one more time just to see if there's any more tool marks left doesn't look like it all right nice and gently we don't want this thing flying off at us here. And we are going to reverse the so we can clean up the bottom in a minute here. Because we do need to get rid of that little nubbin right there.
All right. So what we want to do now is we'll just clean this up. We'll make it so eh, it's going to be too small for it. Eh, it might work as a jam chuck. Let's see if we can get that rounded over here. Just so I can clean up the bottom there. Sometimes I use my pin jaws just to stick in there. But I'm just going to try to do this real quick. Need to get rid of that little nubbin on the end there. These things always drive me crazy. All right. And I just want to check one more time to make sure this will create a tenon. It'll go down inside there. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Give it a. We'll try a little bit here. If not, I'll use my pin jaws. Trying to match the curve on the inside of the box here. Hopefully this will jam right onto it. Okay. You're almost there. It's rubbing right that that spot right there. So we just need to clean that up a little bit. Kind of left the mark when I was rubbing it on the wood. Give me an idea what to aim for here. Almost, almost. Famous last words of a wood turner. Almost. Let's see if we can get that on there good and tight here. Feels like it's on there pretty good, actually. I just don't want it to fly off in the middle of my demonstration here. That wouldn't be a good thing. Seated on there really well. And we'll see what happens here. I just barely need to clean this up. So if it pops off, well, everything will be fine. It's a small piece. It's not going to cause any damage if it does come off. So I'm just going to do some cuts towards the headstock. So if I go towards the side, it, it will tend to pull the piece off the, off the jam chuck here. So I'm just going to clean this up. Yeah, I still got that little nub in there. I want to get rid of that. There we go. Kind of a divot right there, but that's fine because I'm going to take an elf tool. And I'm just going to create some texture on the bottom. That's an elf tool, you might ask. Well, it's one of these little boogers. <laughs> it's just a carbide little cutter with a it's got a bearing right there and a rare earth magnet in the bottom to help hold it in place. And you can do all kinds of designs with these. These are just really great here. So I'm just going to see if I can get a florette going here right in the center. This is soft wood, so it, it tends to cut this really well here. We're going to stop there. We did get a kind of a design right there. That looks nice. So I'm going to grab me my little point tool and just help highlight that. And when I put oil on it, these, these kind of texture marks will show up. They'll create shadow lines. And just to highlight that there. 
almost like I did that little divot on purpose. <laughs> All right, so we got a nice bottom going there. So we can pop this off. Grab my chuck key here. Now the good thing about these little beads I have on here, if I can get a different overhead shot here. Eh, you guys can't see that either, okay. So I can use these beads if I open up my jaws far enough and the jaws will just rest right there which will allow me to do the inside of the box here. Let's see if I can yeah see right there yeah. just snug it up it doesn't need to this is soft wood, so it doesn't need to be like, oh my gosh, it's crazy breakneck stuff here. All right, so we got a good view of that. What time is it? Okay, we're at 4.36. We're doing good. We're going to do good, folks. All right. So I'm going to use a, my parting tool to create steps going towards the inside there, so... I want to make sure it's going to be cutting on center. And I got the tool right there. Yep, that's a good good height for my tool rest. I'm going to turn up my lathe. It's a little too fast. Yeah, about, uh, for those of you who are interested, I'm about 1,900 RPMs there. So I'm just going to start here on the side here. Just go straight in. And then each subsequent step just goes a little bit deeper. And one more. And then I'll flatten out the rest of it. So I can create another texture on the bottom of this part. Okay, so I need to lower my tool rest just a hair to get that part out. And we're not quite at the right angle for the center part here. Just kind of cut it right down the middle there. This looks like a bee stinger, huh? I thought I did that on purpose. So I'm going to tilt my tool rest or my parting tool at just a slight angle so I can get rid of that nubbin on the bottom there. I come up from the bottom. Ah, oh, I'm at the wrong camera. Sorry about that. There we go. There. So I just want to get rid of that little nubbin that's in the bottom. So I'm just going to come in with a my little spindle gouge here and just clean that up get that rid of that there we go and I'm just going to touch it with a small piece of sandpaper move this back out of the way just clean that up real quick there we go. Now I can bring the elf tool into this part and create sort of the same type of design. Whew. And now we got a nice design in there. You guys can see those steps I was creating there. So I'm going to grab me my sandpaper again. I'm going to fold it in the thirds. Just kind of clean up those steps a little bit. So 
I want to move my tool rest out of the way. So I'm just going to bring this in, just touch the corners here. Clean up any tear out that that parting tool might have left behind. And I'll probably grab that point tool and highlight that center part where the elf tool cut. So it's about right, right in that area. All right, so I just keep an eye on it when I switch on the lathe. Doesn't need to go very deep. There we go. And it looks like we're just about done with this project. All right. Almost. There's a little added thing we need to do to this beehive to make it look like a beehive. More so than it already does. All right. So as you can see, we've got a nice looking beehive there. But there's something missing. I bet you guys are already ahead of me on this one. So let me grab some something here. All right. <laughs> and go to the overhead so you guys can see what I'm doing here. What am I talking about? A bag of bees. So we need to just toss them out. We need to get a good piece of probably 180 will work. You need to scratch up the bottoms of these because they're so smooth, there's no teeth for the glue to grab hold of. See, so this one, I just scratch the bottom. Just enough to, doesn't take much, it's just enough to create some tooth on the bottom of these for the, the glue to adhere to. There's a couple of small ones here. Uh, let's see what time is it? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to have time to do a magic wand this time around, but we might be able to do it next time. But let's see here. Bees are missing. That's right. The bees are missing, but I've got that covered. So I need to grab me a roll of paper towel so this thing doesn't roll around on me here. I'll use these. These will work really well. Just kind of helps hold the pieces together. Like this one right here so it doesn't roll around while we put bees on it. Because we you add some bees and then you got to let them sit for a little while before you go to the next section. This is just simple. This simple clear tacky glue you can get at most hobby shops or craft stores like Hobby Lobby or Michaels they sell it and we're just going to stick that little guy right on there this is extra tacky so you can let go of it pretty pretty quickly which one did I scratch here I'm looking for one I scratched uh, there's one so we need a little bee Next to his buddy here. Come on, glue. And we can just kind of stick them on there. We can roll it a little bit. We can put a smaller bee maybe on the lid here. So we're just going to stick that right on here, put him on top. There we go. And we can just stick him on there like that. These tend to stay pretty well with this type of glue. It, it tacks up really quick. And we can just roll this around and maybe put a bigger B on this side here I 
always forget I need to leave this thing upside down so the glue doesn't change on me. Go back into the bottle. This guy's a little bit bigger, so I gotta hold him for a minute. There we go. And so we kind of got, let's see if I can hold this guy up. You guys can see that. Ah, we got ourselves a beehive box. Yeah, see ya. Hope you guys like this one. And I'll, I'll keep working on it. And this is a, a resin bees, so I can put any finish I want over it. I can put a spray over it. I can put oil on them. It's not going to affect them at all once the glue is dry. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. I think it's, oh, man, 10 minutes. I don't know if I can make a, I can shove all this stuff out of the way and, and make a magic wand for you guys really quick. I've got 10 minutes. Let me slide this out of here. We'll give it a whirl. And if I run out of time, then we'll save it for next time. But I need to change my chuck out. What do you guys think? Magic wand? Thank you. I appreciate the compliments on the on the beehive. I really like making them. It's a fun project and not too difficult to, to make. Uh, don't forget Carl's coming up. No one will forget about Carl. He's the last demonstrator of the day. I'm sure he's got some something pretty good something really cool planned for us so so this is just a one and a half inch dowel rod here I'm putting in some pin jaws and I'll change out I'll zoom out on my camera in a second here for you guys can see the whole thing here all right, here we go. Let's zoom out. Oh, wrong direction. A little too close. There we go. And I need to put my larger tool rest on here. And I'll bring the tail stock up a second here. Bouncing cameras all over the place. So I'm just going to try to center this up as close as I can. Just eyeball it. I can't remember how long this thing is as far as measurement goes. How long was it? This is a 15 inch long piece of dowel. It's one and a half inches in diameter. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. Really appreciate that. So we're going to grab a pencil here and determine what, how big of a handle we need. So if I, if I was to grab it myself, yeah, right about there is probably a good place to put a, a bead for the handle. So it is out of rent. Not running really true, so I'm just going to adjust that a little bit here. One more time. Get a little closer. <laughs> Famous last words, huh? Uh, a little too much. Well, I'll just true it up. 
As long as it's in between centers and tightening the jaws, it'll be fine. All right. Let's grab my roughing gouge. I'm just going to true up the ends here. You see how it's wobbling just a little bit. I'm going to be taking all this away anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's running a true, out of true a little bit. Now I'll remark that in a second here. back on there this is more of a production turning of a wand I guess you could call it Just gonna kind of make it a, a taper at both ends here. And I'm gonna come back here and do the same thing. Coming. Little peel cut. Grab me my smaller roughing out gouge here to finish this off. All right, eight minutes. Can I do it? Kind of a taper coming out of the handle there. Kind of a cove right here. Seems a little, still a little too thick for a magic wand, so I'm going to take this down real quick. There we go. It's a little bit better. Kind of a long, long taper into a cove right here. Kind of ease the cuts a little bit better there. And I'm just going to kind of thin it out as I go towards the top. We're going to take all of this out in, in a second here. We're just kind of getting the general shape in the, that we want. All right. Grab me a spindle gouge here. Kind of make a slight beat at the end here. Just kind of. small roughing gouge again just to clean that up all right don't worry don't worry Carl I'll get it done before you start
All right. We need a, a bead right here, a handle. Oop. Now, generally, I would have sanded this already. Not my best one, but hey, not bad for 10 minutes, right? I'm not sure how many people are still watching. I need to take a look, see here. Still got 35 people watching, yeah. Everybody's gonna go talk. See, see. Oh, ah, I knew I messed that up on the end there, but I didn't need to worry about that. Everybody's gonna go see Carl, which I don't blame him. That's fine. So I just need to cut both ends off here. Three minutes, three minutes. Ah. Almost where it's cut off. Clean that up a little bit. I had time to kill, so why not make it a wand, right? <laughs> All right. So we're going to grab me my parting tool, and we're just going to part this puppy right off of here. Kind of. Got us a, we got us our, kind of a real quick magic wand there. What the heck? Why not? <laughs> 